Okay, I'd like to tell you about um, bridge circuits. Uh, they're kind of important in AP physics. And so I just want to show you the different forms of bridge circuits. It's called a bridge circuit because it's almost like there's a bridge across, across here between B and C. And uh, this is one way that bridge circuits can be drawn. A battery, and then current can flow this way, or it can flow this way. Or if the switch is closed, it can flow this way too, or maybe this way. Okay, so um, that's a, that's called a bridge circuit. Here's another way of drawing it. It's the same thing. I've just squared off the edges, so it, you see how those are kind of the same thing. That versus that. It's pretty much the same. It is the same thing. Okay. And then uh, this is the same thing as well. Sometimes we don't put the battery like this. Sometimes we just put it like this. So um, we're just saying that that's 24 volts higher than the ground. In any case, Kirchhoff's loop rule and junction rule is how you do these. Let me explain. Let's go back to the original circuit right here. For the junction rule, um, the current going into this junction has to equal the current coming out. Not only that, but um, if we go down this way, um, if this if this is a certain amount of voltage, then you got to drop that voltage by the time you get down to here because of the loop. Okay. Now these don't have to be the same voltage because if I start here, I go around this loop, I, I would gain voltage because I'm going against the current. Then I drop voltage, but then when I go across here, that's also going to, uh, there can be a voltage drop across there. So a, the voltage at A across A doesn't equal the voltage across B. Okay. All right, so let me show you how you would do this. Um, it, let's, uh, let's assume they want to know for this problem, they want to know the voltage at A with respect to B. Okay, well, the voltage at A with respect to B, um, let's see. If I go this way, do you see how these are just kind of in series? This is 24 volts, and whatever current goes this way, whatever current goes through, let's call that I1, if whatever goes through the 8 ohm has to also go through the 4 ohm because it can't go across here. And so I'm thinking that this is 2 amps. Um, for that same reason, this is 2 amps as well. So what's the voltage drop across here? The voltage drop across here it looks like it's 16 volts because it's 2 amps times 8 ohms. The voltage drop across here is 8 volts. So the voltage drop across here is 8 volts. Okay, now I want to tell you how you can interpret that. If you're at 24 steps above ground and you go down 16, you know how high A is above ground? A is 8 above ground. This is 8 higher than ground. Where is this one, voltage at B, with respect to ground, it only dropped 8. So it's 16 higher than ground. So A is lower than B. If that's 8 and that's 16. So it's negative 8 volts. Uh, look at it this way. There's, there's 8 volts across here, and there's 16 volts across here. So if I go from ground floor, if I go up the 8 volts, then that's 8 volts higher than ground. And if I go this way, I go 16 volts higher than ground. So B is higher. Okay, you see how that all works out? Okay, now if they close this switch, now that's a different thing. Now they close that switch, now current can flow. And so... Um, but what will happen is the voltage at A with respect to B will now be zero. So you can assume that the because of Kirchhoff's loop rule that these both have to be the same voltage. Well, if they both have to be the same voltage, then um, because of symmetry, do you see how they both have to be 12 volts? When you close the switch, this is going to be 12 and that's going to be 12 because this has to be 12 and that has to be 12. These are like in parallel. So it's almost like you have this circuit.
it's not almost like it. You do have that circuit with another eight and a four. So you'd see how the symmetry, you drop 12 there and you drop 12 there. And so that's how you can figure out the currents through these things. Okay. Now, um, there are times when you don't have... Um, you don't have only resistors. You, you can sometimes get some capacitors in here. So let's do one where you have capacitors and, and resistors. So boom, that's a capacitor. Um, we'll go up and over. Let's make this a resistor. Um, let's make that a switch. Let's make this a resistor. Let's make this a capacitor. And go back down to ground. Let's call this um, one farad and two farads and um, one ohm and two ohms. Let's make this six volts higher than ground. Okay, so um, I would like to know the voltage at A with respect to B. Uh, and so this is how this works. Current can't flow through a capacitor, so it can't go this way. It's stuck. Boom, it, can't, it has nowhere to go. Current can't go this way because it can't. It's going to be blocked going this way and blocked going down. So there's no current in here. There's no current in the circuit. So if there's no current in here, I'm thinking there's zero volts. In fact, let me use some colored pens here. I'll use orange for when the switch is open. So I don't know how orange is going to show up, but open. I hope you can see that. So when it's open, this is zero volts. And this is zero volts. But you got to drop all those volts going from, from here to down to there because of the, the mall analogy, I suppose, or the Kirchhoff's loop rule. But this charged up. And because this is charged up, it doesn't take long. It just charges, you know, fast. But once it charges up, then it's going to have all six volts across here. And um, this will have all six volts across here. And so the charge on here is going to be six coulombs. And the charge on here is going to be 12 coulombs. And um, I'm also thinking that the voltage here is um, zero higher than ground. And the voltage here is six higher than ground. Look, six. So the voltage at A with respect to B is um, negative six volts. A is six volts lower. All right, now we'll go with green because I'm going to close the circuit. So let's close the circuit. Can you tell that's green? Okay, when you close that circuit, now the current flows. It does. It goes like this. It S is through here. And those are in series. So the current can flow, and they're in series. Okay, so that's 3 ohms. And so 3 ohms, uh, given 3 ohms of resistance with 6 volts is going to give you, I'm thinking, 2 amps. So there'll be 2 amps flowing down here. 2 amps, 2 amps, 2 amps. And so that means that the voltage is no longer zero. The voltage is two volts here. And the voltage right here is four volts. You can get that two ways. You can do Ohm's law or the loop method to get that. Hey, this is a loop too. So if this is four volts, this is four volts. Because it's a loop now. And if this is um, if this is two volts, then this has to be two volts. So our charge changed on here. This changed to two coulombs, and this having four volts is going to change to eight coulombs. So you see how you do that? These aren't so bad if you know how they work. Sometimes. Uh, They'll, they'll use these circuits to actually measure a resistor's resistance. And um, maybe I'll tell you a little bit about that at school on Monday. Bye.